You know, I normally don't get too excited for the holidays. When I was a kid, Christmas, Halloween, birthdays, and all that were major touchstone events for the year. They were all so much bigger when I was a kid. Then again, everything was. But nowadays, in my adult life, holidays are almost non-existent. Yeah, I, I know, it probably sounds like I'm starting with a joke. You've probably heard all the Christmas carols a thousand times already. And a Christmas story is probably already being played on loop on way too many channels. But I'm not talking about media for once. I'm talking about real life. And in real life, it seems like as time goes on, the holidays have kind of dulled. I don't think that I've seen a trick-or-treater since I graduated high school, for starters. People decorate, sure, but I don't know, life and people in general seem more hesitant to just take a break. Maybe it's just me being all adult and shit, but it kind of feels noticeable, and it's one of the suckier aspects of being an adult. And none of the holidays gets this worse than Christmas. Christmas specials and songs all love to emphasize togetherness and time off and good cheer, but that seems kind of absent, especially in the past couple of years when people have had a hard time feeling cheer at the end of some difficult years. Even in my own personal life, I've noticed that the holidays have held less of an importance to pretty much everyone in my life. I mean, one of the main reasons in the most famous Christmas story of all time, A Christmas Carol, is that Scrooge is seen as such a Scrooge because he doesn't let his employee take a day off on Christmas. However, pretty much all of my relatives have worked every Christmas day for the longest time, and it's gotten to the point where it's no longer disappointing. Even as the snow starts to fall, it isn't exactly looking a lot like Christmas, is all I'm saying. And I'm getting absurdly nostalgic for when holidays felt like, well, holidays. I suppose I'm not entirely blameless. While other reviewers dedicate all Halloween to spooky reviews or December to holiday specials, I tend to do whatever the shit I want. I usually do get a Christmas special in once per year, but the last time that I really got into Christmas spirit was, jeez, 2013. That was four years ago. Maybe I'll make it my New Year's resolution to fix this in 2018. When I feel a longing for a time gone by, cartoons are one of the first places I look. Big surprise. One of them in particular is Ed, Ed, and Eddie. While I would usually pick Courage the Cowardly Dog or even the Powerpuff Girls to watch, I think that Ed, Ed, and Eddie is the perfect show to really help me get into the holiday mood. Even though most of the show takes place in the summer, and the theme for many of the marathons of the show was summer fun. But hey, summer is the most memorable part of the past. Ed, Ed, and Eddie is a strange, strange show. I don't mean in concept, it's actually quite mundane in that regard. Ed, Ed, and Eddie is a show about three kids, all with the same name, trying to scam the neighborhood kids out of their allowance for candy. Ed, Ed and Eddie is uh, more strange in a meta sense. This show does so much that I tend to hate in other cartoons, and yet it is perhaps my favorite cartoon comedy of all time. For starters, our main characters spend all their time trying to trick the neighborhood kids out of money. Not only that, but the other characters that they scam don't end up being angels. I tend to like cartoons that have an emphasis on story. Ed, Ed, and Eddie decidedly doesn't. In fact, their more story-driven episodes, like If It Smells Like an Ed, tend to be some of the more hated episodes. The animation is odd and messy and has a stylistic quirk, and it's really hard to understand why it works. And also, the show has this weird habit where the episodes that aren't holiday specials are better than its holiday specials. The Day the Ed Stood Still is a much better Halloween episode than Boo Ha Ha. Fa La La Ed is a much better Christmas episode than Jingle Jingle Jangle. And I think that it's going to be fun to do a kind of compare and contrast kind of deal. Not that Jingle Jingle Jangle is bad, I still like it, but given the choice, I would always watch Fa La 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 Ed first. The premise is simple. When Ed and Eddie mess around in Double D's parents' room, they find a fruitcake. This leads to Ed thinking that it's Christmas, much to Eddie's annoyance. But slowly and surely, Ed manages to convince the entire cul-de-sac to start celebrating Christmas. In July. The first main difference is that Follow La Ed is more in line with your typical Ed, Ed, and Eddie episode. It takes place in the summer, and it's explicitly designed to feel like your typical Ed, Ed, and Eddie episode. Which ironically helps give it its own identity among the million other holiday episodes out there. You know, every Christmas special ever has the same palette of green, red, and especially white. They all end up looking the same, and it does get kind of boring after a while. It's fun to mix things up with a Christmas special that decidedly doesn't take place in the winter. Especially if you hate winter to the point where you want to fix the Earth's tilt to end the concept of Seasons 1's for all. Uh, I'm not talking about me, by the way. It, it, it didn't work. Jingle Jingle Jangle can easily fall into the category of typical Christmas episode. It's about a jerk learning the true spirit of Christmas and learning not to be a jerk. Follow Ed's plot is kind of unique. 
I honestly can't think of too many cartoons where the characters deliberately decide to celebrate a holiday out of season, which is really, really strange with all the childlike characters that love Christmas that would definitely do something like this that we've had over the years. Like, Ed getting super excited and wanting to celebrate Christmas out of season. That's something that I could imagine SpongeBob or Mabel or Star wanting to do. But no, I don't think that I've ever seen this elsewhere. Besides maybe an off joke. It's honestly a plot that I would be happy to see more of. One of the main differences caused by this episode taking place in the summer is that it feels like it has to work for the Christmas feeling. Unlike Jingle Jingle Jangle, which assumes that you're already in the mood. And let's face it, taking place in Christmas lets a lot of episodes feel okay with more savvy writing and being melodramatic and falling on the tried and true cliches of the season. Like almost every show ever has had a Christmas Carol parody. They don't seem to take the episodes that use the Christmas Carol parody harshly in the same way that they take a Love Triangle episode. It gets to the point where that kind of gets to be a part of the theme of a Christmas episode. Follow all that Ed, because it doesn't actually take place on Christmas, feels the need to work for the Christmas feeling. While Jingle Jingle Jangle definitely does have its jokes, they're not a priority, and Ed and Nettie episodes tend to live and die on how funny they get to be. It's hard to argue that Jingle Jingle Jangle is the funnier episode. I mean, in Follow All Ed, we have this line. Do you say what I say? Where'd you get that mistletoe? It's July! There's no kissing allowed in my parents' room, Ed! Ed finding a mistletoe out of nowhere, Wilfred attacking Johnny, and my favorite joke in the whole episode. That cracks me up every single time. And once again, this is a comedy show, which is why I'm not going too in-depth to what actually happens within the episodes. And of course... There's the joke that Christmas isn't in July, and putting Christmas in July is a silly idea that needs to have some justification. Actually, here's a fun fact that I knew when originally watching the episode, and it, it gave me a special layer of enjoying it. Christmas in July is actually a real thing. Like, I've celebrated Christmas in July before. It's something that happens in many summer camps and campgrounds in the United States, because these places would be closed when Christmas would actually come around. And the kids that had become friends over the summer wouldn't be able to see each other when Christmas actually came. Some campgrounds also had Halloween in August, so yes, Summerween is actually a real thing too. And plenty of people in the Southern Hemisphere do have a tradition of having Christmas parties in July, because the seasons in the Southern Hemisphere are flipped. And holiday specials do kind of lose that magic when they're all about white Christmases full of snow and ice and hot chocolate, when you're in the middle of the hottest month of the year, sometimes in the hottest places on the planet. Christmas in July is not a thing that I'm making up. I have a feeling that I need to reiterate because people constantly believe that I'm making it up when I tell them that Christmas in July is a real thing in some places. And like understanding that the teacher in Perfect is a manifestation of Courage's insecurities, knowing that Christmas in July is actually a real thing does add an extra layer of humor to follow all ahead. And for me, it adds some nostalgia. And you know, if you do live in the Southern Hemisphere and are sick and tired of every special taking place in a winter wonderland, this might be the one for you. Jingle Jingle Jangle certainly has its funny moments, don't get me wrong. But as a whole, it tends to be a little bit repetitive. Most of that episode is Eddie going into someone's house, trying to scam a present, acting like a jerk, and getting kicked out. He does this to about each member of the cul-de-sac. All the while, the other Eds try to teach him the Christmas spirit, and fail. Y you know, it gets kind of obvious after a while. With Fala La Ed, you never know where it's gonna go and it remains surprising, especially if you've never seen the episode before. Which you think would make it all over the place, but it ends up being so silly and likable and good-hearted that it just works. And one of the reasons that a lot of people don't like Jingle Jingle Jangle is because of the joke that it ends on. Eddie has learned nothing and tries to take all the other kids' presents. It's not really funny and makes the moments that we're trying to be more story-driven and emotionally deep kind of pointless in the end. Follow La Ed can get away with Eddie not learning anything because the episode was never about Eddie learning anything. And here's a weird thing. Another thing that makes Follow La Ed the better Christmas special is that it emphasizes the ideas of togetherness a lot better. A lot of Ed and Eddie works not because of the characters themselves, but because of the interactions between the characters. Jingle Jingle Jangle has Eddie on his own for much of it. And while he's not the most unredeemable person in the history of animation, he's not the kind of character you watch for self-improvement. You watch him because he doesn't learn his lesson and he pays for it in humorous ways. That's a lot of what makes the show work. If you did constantly want the Eds to succeed in the end, then it would probably get harder and harder to actually watch the show. It's also strange that Ed and Double D seem to be more on the same page in Follow All Ed, even though one of them is like halfway delusional. Ed has some pretty good non sequiturs in Jingle Jingle Jangle, but overall, their material in that episode is kind of weak. 
I do like Ed's over-the-top excitement of waiting for Santa Claus and uh, stealing the chimney for the night, but that, that does seem to be the highlight of the comedy in that episode. And it does lose a little bit of its luster when Fa La La Ed was the first episode and this had sort of been done before. And here's an even funnier thing. On an emotional level, Fa La La Ed is the better episode. Double D's regret about almost smashing Jimmy's piggy bank is the most emotional moment in both of these episodes. And unlike in Jingle Jingle Jangle, it, it doesn't linger. It lasts just as long as it needs to be. And the episode moves on. In Jingle Jingle Jangle, we deal with each of the color at kids individually, which is nice to see their individual traditions and the different ways they celebrate the holiday, but in a way it kind of feels isolating. Ed and Eddie is a show where you never see the parents, so it looks like each of the kids is celebrating the holidays alone. Sure, they use the word we and they refer to their family members, but in Fa La La Ed we do get to see everyone together and enjoying the holiday as a group. And I have to be honest, many of the characters have their less tolerable moments when they're on their own. Here's the strange thing about Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Most people say that a show is good or bad based on its characters. But because Ed and Eddie is an exception to every rule ever, every single character on Ed, Ed and Eddie is a base-breaking character. I don't just mean that some people don't like some scenes focused on that one character. I mean that there's a significant portion of people who hate the show specifically because of each one of these characters. Some people hate Jimmy because he's a whiny wimp. Some people hate Rolf because he could be, let's say, a little bit weird. Some people hate Naz because she's the epitome of generic love interest, and so on. Some people hate Plank because he is a sociopath. I don't agree with these, but I can see where these opinions come from. And then there are characters like Sarah, Kevin, and the Kanker Sisters, each of which have ruined episodes for me as someone who really does like the show. Like I said, Ed and Eddie is a hard show to talk about because one of the best things that I could say about it is how much I love the show despite having so many bad characters. Sarah is a much louder version of DW, and gets Ed into trouble in not funny ways. Kevin is a jerk jock with no other personality who beats up the Eds, sometimes with no reason. I might get to smile for the Eds at some point as an animated atrocity to explain why Kevin doesn't work, but Ed and Eddie is a show that doesn't really have anyone on a moral pedestal, which is why a lot of kids weren't allowed to watch Ed, Ed and Eddie. It was the cartoon cartoon most likely to be banned from your house even more so than Johnny Bravo, or Courage the Cowardly Dog. The characters have their best moments when they're moments that don't emphasize their characters. The cul-de-sac kids work best as the cul-de-sac kids, and the Eds work best as the Eds. Which is something that Jingle Jingle Jangle really seems to go against. It's entirely Eddie's story. Whereas, you can make the argument that Fala La Ed is Ed's story, but no one changes or develops. But they don't have to as long as the ride is fun. And the ride is extremely fun in Fall La La Ed. Every single moment is a, a better kind of enjoyable. In Jingle Jingle Jangle, which no character actually changes or develops, the ride is decidedly less fun in the end. You have to be careful with joke endings. It's a handle with care kind of trope, and it's the easiest way to screw up your entire episode. While a good joke ending can be fun, if at any point you wanted us to take your story seriously, and Jingle Jingle Jangle is one of the few episodes of Ed and Eddie that did, a joke can leave the audience feeling like we wasted our time instead of, oh, here we go again. Speaking of characters and endings, Fall La Ed is the better episode by default because it doesn't have the Kanker Sisters at all. I'm gonna be blunt. I hate the Kanker Sisters on every single level, and every time they were on the screen, it brought the show down for me. First of all, they're not funny. Actually, no, it's not that they're funny, it's that they are unfunny. Yes, there is a difference. What the Kinker Sisters do to humor is what a black hole does to light. Every single joke about the Kinker Sisters is that they're sloppy and they live in a trailer, or that they have a creepy, creepy crush on the ads. They're a little bit forward, let's say. It was uncomfortable back when the show originally aired. I can only imagine how comfortable some of this looks now. Wait, what are you doing? I'm an angel! Stop! They're also pretty redundant. They're primarily used to punish the Eds for the wrongdoings, 
You know, when Kevin or Rolf or even Sarah could have worked just fine. Maybe even better. Also, the kangaroos often ended up being a cheat in the narrative. Watching many of the episodes again, it's astounding how many times the Eds were on the top, and it seemed like the writers didn't know how to end the episode, so they just randomly threw in the Kanker sisters to kick the Eds off their perch. The Hypnosis episode is a good example of what I'm talking about. The Eds are winning, Kanker sisters, despite not being in the episode anywhere else, just come out of nowhere and win. I got really negative there, but that's because Ed, Ed and Eddie is a weird show to talk about. It's hard to talk about how much I like it. Even though, yes, I do like this show, it is one of my favorite comedies of all time. It's not hard for me to talk about other things that I like. I mean, if I really do like something, with my other admirable animation reviews, it should be kind of clear that I can talk positively. But Ed, Ed and Eddie is such a strange show that defies all rational explanation. Ed is one of the most stupid characters that you'd see in any cartoon ever, and much of his dialogue is random non sequiturs that don't relate to anything. But they work, and it's funny. There's hardly ever a moment of silence in the show, but it, it is funny. It's constantly interesting and creative, and it just holds your attention, and you don't get annoyed from it. With the exception of certain episodes. This is one of those shows where everyone's got at least a few episodes that they don't like. It's kind of magical, in a way. No character in the show can be described as likable if analyzed. But the show is good in spite of that. The show is good in spite of every single one of its qualities, and I don't really understand why. Even in a meta sense, Ed and Eddie is such a great Canadian cartoon that people tend to forget that it's a Canadian cartoon. This isn't my favorite episode, by the way. It would actually be very hard for me to pick because there were so many really good standout examples. Like the Boomerang episode, the Hypnosis episode, the episode where the ads are trying to go up. I'm saying the episodes by their concept and plot instead of their titles because the titles are kind of confusing. As in, it's hard to remember what an episode is based on its title. Despite going on for five seasons and one episode, I don't think that the show ever really dipped in quality. Even when the ads started going to school, which was considered like a hugely controversial thing that would destroy the show back then. It didn't. In fact, the scenarios they pulled off in the school, I think that it may have saved the show or kept it interesting for a few extra years. And it must be said, one of the best cartoon movies ever. Big Picture Show really should have gotten the theatrical treatment over the Powerpuff Girls movie. Next time, we're going back to Springfield and realizing that maybe not celebrating Christmas isn't the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm.